if you have large artwork that is larger than the size of your scanner. So in this case, large is relative, right? Because you might just have a flatbed scanner that is eight and a half by 11, but you have a document or a piece of art that you want to scan or an old newspaper that is say twice that size. How do you take that larger image and scan it on your small scanner and then combine those multiple scans so you have one cohesive image. I'm going to show you how to do that today using Affinity Photo. I started using Affinity programs about three months ago rather than Adobe and I was a loyal Adobe fan but I really love Affinity and once you learn the nuance and the differences it's just as good, in my opinion, for about 98% of the various design elements and tasks that I do as a website designer that also does some photo restoration and digital fine art scanning. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So I have Affinity Photo 2.0 already open here on my screen. Now, when you are using Affinity and you use the panoramic option, you need a certain file format. I have been using PNGs because it is a format that saves a large amount of data that is compatible for the operation that we're going to be doing. So earlier this week, I had to, my staff scan some art for a client of ours and some of them were larger than our large format scanner. I have an uh, Contex IQ Flex, so it has an 18 by 24 inch bed. And she had a couple of very long pieces of art. So we're going to use those as examples for today. So I'm going to go to File and Open. <coughs> and then I'm going to find the images that I need. So we're doing sailboat and the bottom and then we're going to open them. They're scanned as PDFs at 600 dpi dots per inch. And we're going to go ahead and tell it to load all images or load all pages rather. <clears throat> and then I don't mess with these settings. I haven't needed to. Um, it is automatically going to generate as an RGB color space just because that's how it scans. Okay, so those are going to open and it may take a few moments. And if you hear meowing, that is our office cat, Mr. Biscuit. He hears me talking and apparently wants to come join. What be? Okay, and then it's going to ask us the same thing for the second uh, file. Any Jeopardy fans out there? Do, 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 do. Okay, so this is the bottom. Oh, no, this one is the top now, and this is the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and use this crop tool, and I'm just going to drag it over to about there, and then I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to export. as a PNG
and it is rather large as you can see it is still calculating the estimated size for this png <laughs> While we wait, why don't we go over the different file types or image sizes? So as I said, I'm using or uh, saving this or exporting this rather as a PNG. PNG keeps the quality higher than a JPEG, which is why I use it for this uh, operation. It also supports transparent backgrounds. So if you are doing a logo or something where you want the background removed so you can see through it, then a PNG is best rather than a JPEG. Okay, now that this is good, we're gonna go ahead and export. <clears throat> and it also works well for text heavy images. The downside to PNGs is that it is a much larger file size than JPEG because it keeps more data points for reference. Um, so you kind of have to hedge your bets, if you will, or know what the end result is going to be before deciding if you're going to do PNG or JPEG. So a JPEG is what most people are familiar with. It is the standard file type for images taken with your phone and for sharing. Most websites, if they have not been converted to another file type that's called WebP, most of those are JPEGs because again, it's what everybody knows. <clears throat> Um, let's see, I've got some notes over here. So another file type, um, is the TIFF. It's the highest quality possible, but you have to have specialized software in order to open and do anything with those files. And not everybody has that software readily available. All right. So we're going to do the same thing to this image. And again, we're going to hit apply and export PNG. Also, something to keep in mind when you are scanning artwork that you may or may not be scanning to print is that when you scan a piece of art, you are scanning using a color system called RGB, red, green, and blue. That is the color system that monitors and your TV screen and everything else utilizes. When you go to print, most professional printers print in CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K stands for black. It can take a lot of trial and error to get the scanned image of your original to match as closely as possible the original when you go to print it because of the change in <clears throat> the different colorways. So I don't mind. I actually prefer that the printed copies look a little different than the original because it makes the original even more special and it also identifies a copy as a copy all right and then once this is done we will be able to stitch them together When you go to do this yourself, it may not take, I mean, we're at almost 10 minutes now. 
<clears throat> but it may not take this long for your images to export into the file type that you decide. <clears throat> it's taking this long because I like to make sure that I have as good a quality as I can for the artists that we service. So I scan at a minimum at 600 DPI. My scanner goes up to 1200. Uh, most people will call it good enough at 300. So the choice is yours. Okay, so now that that is complete, we're going to come up here and we're going to go to File, New Panorama. You can also see this keyboard shortcut, which is Control, Alt, Shift, and P. You press all four keys at the same time to open this window. Now I'm going to click Add, and I'm going to go to where I had the files. I'm going to click them both and say Open. I want to make sure they're both over here. Now, one of the things that you want to make sure of when you are stitching together multiple images is you need at least 20% overlap. So that way the software has <clears throat> enough reference points to line all of the different pieces up together so that when it blends it, it looks like one piece and not multiple scans. Okay. So now that we've added the images, we're going to say stitch panorama. And over here on the right hand side, it's going to give you a preview. Okay, and it's a teeny tiny little preview, but looks okay. So we're just going to go ahead and say okay and see how it looks. So did you notice that while it was rendering, we had a line that was going right across the top of these sails? That's what my little face was for. I was like, huh, that better go away. And thankfully it did. But that is where the join point was for the two images. So now that we have it completely stitched together, looks pretty good. I'm going to zoom in and make sure that everything is hunky dory and it looks pretty darn good. So now I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to come back over here to crop <clears throat> and I'm going to crop it as close as I can and then see when I go over the edge here, I get two little arrows that have a little bit of a curvature to it. If you need to straighten an image, then you click and drag and you can straighten it. So when you go to crop it, it crops straight. What I mean by that is, so now the arrows are straight, so I can click and drag to keep cropping. And then I'm going to hit apply. And there we go. We could crop all the way to the edge here and get rid of this little bit of gray. But I like to leave just a little bit on the outside. Um, so that way the person that is going to be using this for whatever end result is, um, they can kind of fiddle with it how they see fit for their uses. And this is destined to go on my client's new art website. So that, my friends, is how you can stitch together multiple scans of a larger artwork and combine it 
by using Affinity Photo and the Panorama setting. And as you can see, Panorama doesn't have to mean horizontal. It can mean that vertical stitching as well. I hope you found this helpful. Let me know in the comments below what questions you have or if there's anything you need more clarification on. Enjoy!